What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of Gaming Without Parole. Uh, this is episode 50. Woo! 50! <laughs> yay! <laughs> balloons and like, little pop things. Yeah. Oh, don't snap. You're not allowed to snap. <laughs> sitting across from me this week is Desra. And sitting across from me, as always, is Brian Paul. Hey. Oh, Literally we're always, even at home, he's sitting across from me. It's very... It's been a lot of stress on my relationships at home, actually. But he's never weird. alone. Never alone. Nope. I was alone. I was all by myself. myself. <laughs> Nobody was looking. I was thinking of you. Ah, oh, that's a good song. It is a good song. Um, so we wanted to do something a little special for our fiftieth episode. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, no. we can do that. No, okay. <laughs> you know what's you know it's actually funny seeing ourselves here in the uh, in the yeah. in the what's that called the, uh, the the monitor the monitor yeah you're making this sound like an actual studio I know seeing ourselves here in the monitor uh, it's a little funny because when when we uh, when we started off this show, I was like, I always need to make sure I'm wearing a different shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, something cool and video game or movie or uh, nerd culture related. And every week, right, every week, have some have a different new shirt on. Yeah. And it's devolved to the point where I'm just like, whatever <laughs> shirt is lying around that has the fewest wrinkles on it before Desra shows up for, for filming. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's okay. Actually, well, and, and my, you know, nothing beats the plastic plain white tee. So, hey there, yeah. No, 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 no. So weird trivia. Do you know when wearing a white T-shirt or actually wearing T-shirts became okay? Uh, after Labor Day. Well, no. Uh, well, I mean specifically, like because this was always you know it was a piece of underwear basically. Right. Right. Marlon Brando. Yeah. Marlon Brando. A street was a streetcar named Desire. Huh. Stella. That that whole thing. Mm. Him walking around in that movie in just a white T-shirt made it okay to start suddenly where it was now it was okay to wear t-shirts thanks man yeah thank you we owe you yes this podcast owes you tons <laughs> um so what are we talking about today we're talking about well, well i think one thing um you know this is episode 50 i'm a relatively new addition to the channel mm -hmm. and we were talking about well you know what this is a nice place to kind of reboot restart uh, an episode to send people to when you're like hey what's this without pro uh, games yeah. and Without pro gaming show all about this is our chance to tell you. So I thought maybe we could take some time to sort of introduce ourselves to the audience, hello audience, okay. um, and then maybe talk about where Without Pro came from and where it's going. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important to note is that we actually relaunched the show only about 10 episodes ago. This is a re relaunch. It's a re relaunch. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, we'd love to have like a new set and a new music and new theme songs and new graphics and stuff. But there's already been a lot of work put into the new stuff over the last 10 episodes and i think what we need to stress is that new things are always happening here but it's going to be like this subtle evolution every episode where you might say you know there's a new background or a new poster or a new it's pretty sweet right it's like gotham city you might animate this time i, I don't know <laughs> who who knows what i had time to do this week um, but you'll see if you made it that far into the last episode pat yourself on the back because I can't do it through the camera. Oh, I should have silenced my phone. That's okay. So, um, so with any luck, Gotham City will animate this week. That, that is really my only goal. <laughs> so, we don't have any penalties on set yet, because most times when people record, there there are penalties for when someone doesn't show up their phone. So, if you have any good ideas for what kind of penalty Brian should pay for not showing off his phone, or I should pay in the future for not showing mine off, go ahead and leave a comment. Yeah. Make it good. I don't like this. <laughs> Um, so, let's start. Let's start back at the beginning of gaming without parole. Okay, so okay. I guess I'm not here anymore. Nope. Oh. Um, I kind of want to. I, I want to let people know where this show came from before yeah. we tell them where it's going. Makes sense. Back uh, years ago, I'd say five years ago. Wow. Uh, I was going through maybe a rough time. Mm -hmm. um, my whole, my whole life was kind of a rough time, <laughs> but to, to varying degrees. My parents were always amazing. I put myself through hell, though. And I would say I was drinking too much and probably um, not taking life very seriously. And things were definitely on a downward spiral. But the only thing that I really looked forward to on a weekly basis mm -hmm. was Podcast Beyond, which was IGN's PlayStation podcast. Okay. There were a few personalities on there yep. that, like... And this was back in the day when podcasts were podcasts, when you had to put your headphones on, listen to them, and you're on your iPod or your or your phone, and that's that's all it was was just audio. 
Now, I like the audio ones still. Oh, I'm, there's a lot of great <laughs> ones still, but I'm I'm a video guy, and yeah. I, I like my video production, and I like to see stuff here in the background. I, although I have no idea what we're going to be showing for all this year. Maybe a podcast beyond logo. Oh, that's no probably idea. it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just just stare out at Gotham City while it animates <laughs> beautifully. It's not going to animate. It's just going to be Gotham City there and Gotham City here and Gotham City. There. It's everywhere. I'm going to tear down all the all the walls and just put up windows. Don't no. you dare. So basically what was going on is that all week was awful. And I look forward to that one hour a week where I could da- finally download that MP3 and find the time to just put the headphones on, tune out the world, and feel like I was there mm-hmm. with my friends yeah. who I'd been listening to for months and then eventually years. Um, and they're up to episode 450-something now, but it's it's not the same. It's it's different people and, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, and you're in a different place, too. Exactly. Exactly. So this gave me something to look forward to. And as I started to relate to those personalities that were on that podcast, I suddenly was like, I was like, I want to go to PAX East and, mm-hmm. and, and meet these people. So I remember going to a PAX East and going to the meet and greet uh, to meet um, I'm, I'm assuming it was Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty and Ryan Clements. Sure. And the line was ridiculously long. Of course. This was just awful. And I remember being really sick that weekend. I don't know if I had yeah. the flu or what it was, but I got myself out of bed and mm-hmm. I went and I took the tea and just managed to get into Boston and walked down to the bar where they were having to meet and greet. And the line mm-hmm. was ridiculously long. And of course, it was getting darker and it started to rain. Of course. Here I am outside, no cover. Already sick. Yep. Pe- people <laughs> behind me in line are like, they, they're, I heard them talking. Like they, don't, they didn't even know what they were there for or who they were there to see. They just okay. wanted free stuff. Yeah. And it bothered me so much. I was like, I'm standing here in the rain to meet these people, mm-hmm. and you just want free stuff. Uh, is the all-consuming power of swag, man. Yeah, that's true. So then I heard a voice. Mm-hmm. This was after at least an hour or so of standing in line in the rain, sick. And it was Greg Miller from podcast beyond yeah and he had been drinking and he made his way outside (laughs) and he started walking down the line and talking to each person who was waiting in line one by one that's awesome it was awesome and i was like there's no way he's going to make it all the way down to me i'm so far down in the line Mm -hmm. but he did he took time to talk to every single person in line shake shook their hands and and took pictures and 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 talked and signed autographs and stuff like that and it was just so nice of him and when he got to me he just looked into my eyes Mm -hmm. and like I swear that he almost teared up. Yeah. He didn't say a word. Just mm-hmm. gave me a gigantic hug. Oh. Like, awesome. he just knew. Yeah, yeah. He knew that this was, like, this was just the worst situation <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. And there I was out of pure love for the podcast. And he just gave me a hug. And uh, and, and I remember that. Yeah. because Because what that podcast was to me was this, was this glimmer of hope in a kind of a dark world. Mm-hmm. And what he was to me was this person who cared more about his fans than anything else in the world. Yeah. And I always said, first I wanted to work for IGN. And when that, when I let that dream go, mm-hmm. I realized that I wanted to create a podcast and I wanted to be that person for someone else. That's fantastic. And that's where Gaming Without Parole came from. So, fast cool. forwarding quite a bit, mm-hmm. I sobered up. Okay. And the first thing I did when I sobered up was create a Craigslist ad. Okay. And it was in the video game section and I asked if anybody out there cared as much about podcasts as I did and anybody wanted to start up a an actual mp3 podcast mm-hmm. with me and that's where I found Mike Zeller Mike Zeller Mike Zeller replied with a three-page resume <laughs> oh my goodness he was overqualified yeah <laughs> he uh I was like you know this doesn't pay right <laughs> this is just for funsies <laughs> and he was still interested uh and so we we've we recorded week after week after week after week mm-hmm an audio podcast uh and for probably six months we recorded and never shared those with anybody because we didn't think we were good enough yet oh wow that's so episode one that you can find here on without pro games youtube channel mm-hmm. <laughs> it's probably episode 35 technically oh, wow. that's yeah. it was just our first video one and youtube yeah. made it super easy for us to upload it mm-hmm. whereas itunes was kind of jumping through some hoops yeah. yeah so uh and that's that's where without parole games all started Okay. And so uh, Mike Zeller has to be credited, actually, with the name Gaming Without Parole. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. It's, uh, it, it, and I think it's also, uh, he coined the phrase so well because 
we really wanted to convey a life sentence of this passion that we had for mm-hmm. video gaming, but also how it was controlling us as well. <laughs> it's life yeah. without parole as a gamer. It's gaming without parole. Gaming without parole. All right. All right. Excellent. So that's uh, that's the history. That's history of the I would not just the ch- I'm not just gaming without parole, but without parole games as a whole channel. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But now it's time to learn about Desra's history. Hello. Yes. Um, we, we need to find out where you came from. Where I came from. I was born at... Po- no. All right. We're not going to... That, that, that's a quote oh. that doesn't quite work anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Well, my name is Desra. Um, Desra the Strange, actually, is my, my stage name. I'm a uh, professional magician. I'm also a uh, fencing instructor. And um, now I am a podcaster. Yes, you thanks are. To, thanks to Brian here. So I am expert in things that don't pay a lot of money. <laughs> uh, um, as far as, uh, I guess, my bio goes, you know, it's funny. Like, I have um, a, a deep connection with, with, I like, really, really love podcasting as well. Mostly audio podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty much, 99% of the reason I have my phone with me is not to talk to people or be talked to. It's to listen to podcasts. Um I like that. Yeah, I'm, you know, not, <clears throat> I like a lot of uh, comedy podcasts, Never Not Funny is a fantastic one, history ones, hardcore history, things like that. Um, and I absolutely get where you're coming from. There's something about, um, especially the audio podcasts, where you have these people kind of, you know, in, in your head, and it's, it's like you're sitting there in the room with them having the conversation. Exactly. So it's very easy to kind of fall into this, like, oh, these are, you know, these are people I know. You get to, to the in jokes and, and the references and things like that. And it's, it definitely becomes a, a you know, I would say an an important part of your life. Oh yeah, yeah, these are these are friends. Yeah, and there's there's podcasts like I used to be a big Magic the Gathering player. I'm not so much anymore, but there was a podcast I listened to when I was a player, and I still listen to it just because, you know, again, uh, experiencing that relationship. I guess yeah. yeah, you know, it's kind of a one way relationship, but it's still a relationship. Uh, so I was really, uh, uh, you know, I was hesitant at first to help out with this because one thing I, I didn't want to be was the guy who kind of like came in to help out and then like oh I can't do it anymore and was in and out you know I wanted to be able to come to a situation where if I was going to be part of the podcast I wanted to be there every week because that's that's an important thing that I've appreciated in the, the shows I listen to come hell or high water these people are putting out the content every week you know um, so I wanted to make sure I got that yeah I figured if you didn't show up I just have to start doing it by myself yeah yeah and it's I mean, not impossible to have a conversation by yourself, but not nearly as entertaining for everyone else it is for you. I do, I do watch some podcasts that are single person podcasts, and mm-hmm. I have to give credit where credit's due. That is, that is hard work. It is, yeah. You got to no be able to bounce thoughts and ideas off people, mm-hmm. and I've seen some where there's just yeah. you know twenty minutes, no cuts. It's yeah. just, just, yeah, yep. Um, so good on you. <laughs> I'm looking at you, implant games. Um, so I guess yeah, what we're um, so, where did where did magic come from? How like where did when did you start doing magic? Um, well, as as a magician, I'm actually kind of a late bloomer. Um, you know, a lot of people they start as a magician. You know, starting into magic at like eight or nine years old. Kind of everyone goes through a phase where like they get a magic book, they want to learn a couple card, card or coin tricks. Sure. And most humans, kind of like, wow, this is actually kind of really hard and or boring or weird, and I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And they move on to other things like sports and girls, um, or boys. Uh, I didn't, I, I kind of went through that phase, you know, and I didn't really, wasn't super into magic until I actually uh, started working as a summer camp counselor um, and when I was like 18 or so. And it uh, turns out, you know, knowing a couple card tricks, really good icebreaker with the kids. There you go. And uh, we had like a weekly talent show at the camp, so I kind of did like bigger things. And eventually I got to the point where, um, and that camp was in Maine, I, I lived up there for a while. I moved back down here and I was at a restaurant, there was a magician named Ron Christensen. Hi, Ron. Uh, he's a, a fantastic local magician here. He was doing tableside magic. Um, I just started, hey, I, you know, I, I kind of made a reference to one of the things I knew he was going to do. And he said, oh, you're a magician? I said, well, a little bit. And, uh, yeah, he's introduced me to the local community of magicians around here. Uh, Jason Callio, Fran Flynn, um, who else? Malik uh, Haddadi. And they kind of took me under their wing and pointed out that I was a little better than I thought I was. And like, yeah, you, you should probably go pro with this. And, uh then with that and a lot of support from my wife, now I'm kind of a, a semi-professional magician. Right on. So it's you know it's not like just like every other performing artist, you know. That's what I say I do, but really what I do, I'm a server at a restaurant, you know. But <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. Um, Which brings us to how Brian and I met. <laughs> right. 
Yep, uh, it wasn't. We haven't even known each other that long, really. No, it's only about. Actually, I'm not even up on a year. No, that, that's pretty crazy. But uh, I, I really appreciated what Brian was trying to do here, and I thought it was uh, fantastic. Like this, you know, literally grassroots. Just this is something I want to bring into the world, and I, I thought it was a uh, fantastic and. I was like, yeah, you know, originally, some of you may have noticed a few appearances of a, a voice of the internet, and that was kind of my first attempt. I was like, well, maybe I can do something to help out, but I don't have to be there all the time. Yeah. And it ended up being a little more bother than it was worth. Um. <laughs> maybe. I mean, on both ends, too, because yeah. uh, the Midnight Games cast that Des, was, that Des is referring to, mm-hmm. uh, he was the voice of the internet, he'd pop up and correct all of our... Uh, Facts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that it was, we were wrong yeah, about. Yeah, the idea was it was to be a, like a, a parody of that guy who corrects everything all the time, yeah. and um, because that guy is kind of annoying, and it turns out like being that guy is actually annoying. Yeah, just and just having to do that is yeah. Yeah, and you were you were uh, yeah you try you it seemed like you were having a harder time finding time to do that than even to do this because yeah. to find all the facts that we'd screwed up on you'd actually have to watch the entire hour <laughs> right. and a half episode and then take notes and yeah. film yourself whereas for this you can actually just show up for right. you know half hour hour a week and ironically enough um since this this happened well Peeking behind the curtain a little bit, this happens fairly late at night. We we film this after uh, we get out of work. Everything we do here without pro games yeah. happens late night, right. and um, which is fine because you know I've got a family and children and recording voice on the internet by myself. Yeah, I had to do it at home and like find you know twenty minutes where the house was quiet, which is very difficult to do. Um, versus this, which I can show up and we can kind of yeah. knock it out after work. So. Yeah, um, that is uh, yeah one of the benefits, I guess, of uh, almost everyone that's part of this uh, channel working as a server. We can all, yeah. after work, all meet up and, <laughs> and entertain you as best as possible. Uh, so, Jeremy's the only guy that doesn't do it, and yeah. uh, and we just He's make him stay up late. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Well, actually, I had a question for yeah. you. You brought up having a wife and kids. Yes. Now, Hello. I don't have that. Um, I've strayed as far away from that as I could my entire <laughs> life and yeah. I'm a little curious to know um, here you know here we are I'm uh, I'm, I'm single and uh, he's single hey. uh, I'm single Gentleman. and uh, very few commitments as far as like real life goes mm-hmm. right I mean I, I see my parents sometimes and I go to work to pay the bills and to promote this channel yeah. and uh, <laughs> and that's kind of it all my free time is devoted to making content here so, my question is: mm-hmm. is like I get to play games pretty much all the time. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the limited amount of time that you must have to spend. Well, how did how did getting married and having kids change your passion for? I mean, not just video games, but like you said, you were very into Magic: The Gathering. Mm-hmm. Um, what? How did that all? What was that transition like? Well, so actually, Magic: The Gathering is a perfect example. Something I really, really enjoyed, and after a while, it was just like, well. I have so much many things going on in my life. I have to decide what am I going to get rid of. Yeah. Because your kids, um, obviously. Yeah, off of, clearly. Yeah, first and, and, and once I did that, it still has to leave something else. Then I got rid of the magic camp. Okay. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, Jason Kelly, one of the magicians I know. You know, he taught me a very important lesson: how uh, important it is to be able to say no to things. Okay. Because it sounds like you know, oh, saying no is very negative. But what saying no to one thing does is free you up to say yes to the things you were really important. So you can be absolutely invested rather than being spread out over 30 different things mm. kind of half acidly you can just you know focus on a few things here and there um so when it comes to you know things like my hobbies like like gaming for instance i still love gaming obviously yeah. um but i have to be very picky I, you know that's why like bad games kind of upset me now <laughs> because it's just like well i only have so much time to game yeah. so i don't want to waste it you know going like an hour into a game and realizing, oh, this is garbage. Um, so that's, you know, for me, being on a gaming podcast and when we're talking about topics like, okay, like, say, uh, the Batman episode that'll be coming up. Yeah. You know. Next week. We're going to go look through, like, all the Batman games throughout the history and say, hey, these are the ones that are worth checking out. Yeah. You know, and f- that's the kind of thing for me as a viewer I would like. So I don't have to go do that work myself. I can say, oh, I feel like I'm playing a Batman game. What's a decent one? Right. You know, or, you know, uh, when we're talking about game series we love or games for a specific specific console you know these kind of general overarching concepts to let us dial in and say these are the ones that are worth your time um so yeah i guess the the basic secret is if you get all this stuff going on you need to decide 
you know, which ones are the priorities? And I, I like the definition of priority. I think, uh, is it Merlin Man? Uh, basically, your priority is really the thing you can't let die. Okay. You know, people say, oh, I have like 10 different priorities. No, you don't. <laughs> there is one priority in right. your life. You only have one priority. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, but really just figuring out, you know, so again, going back to the magic of the game, I realized that was just taking up too much of my life, too much of my headspace, and I had to let it go. You had a similar uh, experience, I believe, with Minecraft too, right? Well, Minecraft is more of, I I know I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I can... I, I, you didn't, you didn't find that was the issue with magic? You didn't think of it as... No, because well, magic, like, you can't really play by yourself. I mean, you can sort of. There are you're, some online games and things like that. But to really get the full experience, you know, you need to go play a draft or have a group of friends okay. uh, that you can play with. And uh, that was just trying to schedule all that stuff what wasn't working out. Okay. And then I did try and, like, yeah, you know, goldfish and things like that by myself and, or, like, read all the strategy guides. But I realized, why am I doing all this work on strategies if I'm not ever going to have time to play? Now Minecraft, the problem is, I really enjoy it. I'm, I'm um, I love playing in survival. I love trying to like build incredibly complicated, um, not necessarily like decorative, but things with like redstone switches and all that, like uh, building logic gates and all that. Really dumb. Well, not dumb, but just very involved stuff. And the problem is, I know my personality. If I sit down and start to play, four hours will go by, and yeah. it's just oh, I've done none of the things I should have. So. Um, I'm also a, a college student as well. I actually went back to school. So now that I'm back in school, I have to have a very clear note. I cannot play Minecraft for the next, you know, six to seven months. Yeah. While I'm in school, no. Uh, just because it's too easy for me to say, oh, I know I have that paper due, but let me just play like 20 minutes. No, I can't. I can't do that. Um, you know, other ga- other types of gaming that have very clear, like, beginning and points and things like that, mm-hmm. I can't. I can do. Um, you know, I just... I finished Halo 4. Um, oh, you did? Yes, I did. That's yep. wonderful. Yeah. Um, and that's like the first game I sat down and actually ran through the whole campaign in, in a while because my kids are back in school. So actually I actually have some time to really How many that. hours do you think that took, just out of curiosity? Um, Not that many, actually. Uh, that was one thing I, th- I found was a little disappointing. Yeah. You know, overall, I do like uh, I did like it. And, you know, um, I think 343 is actually doing a great job taking the mantle. I haven't played Halo 5 yet, so... Maybe they, they, they biffed it there. Yeah. But um, I will say that the single-player campaign was a little shorter than I thought. Um, I don't know. I was I, maybe eight hours, ten hours. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty quick. Okay. You know, and if, if you're familiar with Halo, and the I mean, some of the weapons are great, but it, it went along at a pretty quick pace. Well, and that's actually, um, for me, I think eight to ten hours is, a, is kind of a sweet spot. Yeah. You know, there's, back in the day when you were younger playing, I remember PlayStation 1, like RPGs, mm-hmm. You wanted to get the most bang for your buck. Yeah. You know, if, a, if an RPG ended before the 60-hour mark, you'd mm-hmm. well, I really got screwed here. But that's not the case anymore. There are too many games to play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have a bit more disposable income as an adult. Yeah. So I feel like I'm just going to get backlogged um, to a ridiculous degree mm-hmm. if these games aren't shorter. So 8 to 10 hours for me, I think that was how yeah. long like the first Uncharted game was. I was, like, really happy about that. I think, I think personally, I don't have a definition of like how long the game should be, but the game should be as long as it needs to be. Very true. Just like you know, I, I feel about books or stories or or, yeah. or movies. You know, if a movie is three hours long and it needs three hours to tell the story, I'm all behind that. If a movie is three hours long because they want to pad it out and and because that's what movies are supposed to be now, right. that's pretty crappy. And you know, we've all played games that really only had ten hours of gameplay, but were forty hours long because you had you know thirty hours of fetch quests and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Gone Home is a perfect example. Yeah, it was you know roughly ninety minutes to two hours long, depending on how much time you took getting through, mm-hmm. and uh, that that was a perfectly paced game. Yeah, where you know the it, it it was like it was sort of like a movie that was told better than a movie could tell it, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just really really well done. People complained about the length, which was asinine. It's right. it was it was perfect length, yeah. uh, and you can't. It's, we're coming to a, a place now too where you can't say. Um, you know what's the right price to pay for a certain length of game? Mm-hmm. You're saying well, what's appropriate? What's what's yeah. the right length for this game? Um, I think Gone Home was twenty dollars when it came out. Okay. Um, you know what? For the experience you get out of that game, yeah, totally worth every penny. I don't know if this is an appropriate metaphor, but uh, since we're on the topic, that's the kind of the way I feel about restaurants too. Yeah, I have no problem dropping, let's say, fifty bucks, a hundred bucks on 
a meal for myself if it's worth the price. Yeah. You know, like I won't, I don't really like, let's say the, the Olive Garden out of a hat. Just because it's not the food is terrible. I just think it's massively overpriced for what it is. But when you're here, you're family. Well, yeah. You know, versus, uh, well, you know, maybe, well, no, that, that would be a shameless uh, personal plug. But, um, you know, there are other restaurants where if you, you look at the menu, it's like, oh, that's a little steep. But, oh, here we go. Disney. I'm a huge Walt Disney World fan. Not okay. Disney movies, Walt Disney World. And uh, the restaurant, you know, some of the sit-down restaurants there, pretty steep prices. Okay. But you sit down, it's like, oh, actually, this is pretty good versus you go to like a six flags you go to a restaurant there get your chicken fingers pretty steep prices there but you're paying for awful awful food can you call them restaurants um, is that what they are well it's a dining experience of some kind but yeah yeah and we've gotten way off topic i think but yeah. welcome to gaming without that's, right. <laughs> that's our that, that's the actual statement gaming without parole way off topic since yeah. 2014 yeah, let's, uh, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay. I don't know when we started this thing. I haven't been keeping track. Um, mm. We did, we, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, so, I don't know where this this show should go. You're you're in, you're a new host, and and I hope that you take as much ownership in gaming without parole as I do. I'm kind of curious to know what the viewers want, hmm. because. When we first started talking about this and saying, yeah. well, what's, what are some good topics? Mm -hmm. It was really just any topics to give us an excuse to talk about games we loved. And I, I think that's a great place to go. And I think yeah. it is, too. Um, I, do wanna, I do love the console-centric episodes mm -hmm. where we can just say, hey, we love the Wii. Let's talk about all of our favorite Wii games. But as you mentioned, we're going to run out of topics real soon if we focus on that. Right. Um, so... I think we're gonna. I think as far as the future of without of gaming without parole, I'd like to do it organically and sort of see what topics come our way, mm -hmm. not just from the community, but also from from video game news. You know, as as virtual reality becomes a thing, uh, that that's a brand new topic, and that's going to create all sorts of brand new issues and discussions. Yeah. Right. So, I say let's let's not plan for the future. Let's. Okay. Let's, uh, let's fight the future. Let's piss in the oh, wind. That's that's different. That's probably not what I was going for. <laughs> uh, yeah. Before we, you know, before we call it quits, um, it's going to be an easy episode to edit because we haven't talked about any games. Um, do you want to do you want to give uh, some of your video game background? Oh yeah, Tell us that's, where that's you a great came idea. from. Yeah. Uh, so I'm an old guy. Um, I've been gaming since a long time. Uh, edit, edit, and insert my voice. However, you like since nineteen. <laughs> yeah, um, my first console was uh, my first game system was the Atari twenty six hundred. Uh, we had then Me the too. ColecoVision. Oh, nice. Right, yeah. Which I think actually, if we go, I think chronologically that might be backwards. Like, I think so. I probably should have gotten the Coleco first, but for whatever reason, we got the Atari first, then a Coleco. Um, the comments then, will correct you. Yeah, I, I'm sure they will. No one makes it yeah. this far. It's okay. Um, then I uh, got the NES, you know, um, Super Nintendo, N64, and then I stopped playing consoles. Right. Pretty much. Uh, I went to PC games for because at the time, uh, you know, PCs could do a lot more. Right. At least I felt there the, the games would be a lot more complex. Um, I got really into into uh, real time strategy games, um, you know, Command and Conquer, uh, uh, Civilization. Well, actually, Civilization. Anyways. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, StarCraft, of course. Yeah. And ironically, um, first-person shooters. So, like, I was just real-time strategy, first-person shooters. Spent a lot of time in both of those. Yeah. And those were, at the time, way better on PCs than they were on consoles. Well, you said you went from N64 to PCs. Yeah. And if I had an N64, <clears throat> then I probably would have gone to PC, too. Yeah. Um, I feel like the PlayStation, luckily, though, was uh, it's a fantastic console. that the first library of games mm -hmm. that the N64 never really offered. Going back though, however, mm -hmm. N64 actually had quite a few hidden gems. Oh yeah, yeah. hmm, maybe that's a topic for discussion. Mm -hmm. um, then eventually, uh, I think, and I think I mentioned on an earlier episode, I was as a PC gamer and as a first-person shooter guy, I was all excited about this new game called Halo that was going to be coming out. It's like, yeah, there was a release date and everything. Wasn't Halo <laughs> supposed to initially be a strategy game? Uh, yes, originally, um, but then stuff happened. It was going to be a first-person shooter, and you know we saw the Halo combat evolve, and great. Yeah. All of a sudden, it went poof yep. and disappeared. Like, what, what? What happened to this game? Well, what happened was the Xbox was announced, yeah. and Microsoft decided they wanted it to be one of their launch titles. Um, 
And so, believe it or not, Halo was the thing that got me to try out an Xbox. And I really liked it. And of course, if you... This is not really saying much, because of course, if you pop the hood on the original Xbox, it's just a PC. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty much exactly what I mean. Um, and But then from there, I kind of switched back to uh, P, uh, consoles. You know, I still do a little PC gaming here and there, um, but I'm, you know... <laughs> honestly for price reasons i'm out of the the graphics card race you know um yep. so it's now it's a lot easier to just buy a console buy a game put it in and hey it works i don't have to update drivers or buy new ram and all that fun stuff yeah i've been that way for a long time mm. um you know i i obviously love the graphic adventure games that that's what got me into gaming maniac mansion zach mccracken loom indiana jones and last yep. crusade and um that's secret of monkey game. island yeah. Yeah, and then Sierra's King's Quest, Space Quest, I mean, all these things. Yeah. Uh, and they were awesome. And it was a weird jump to go from that to Sega Genesis, um, where it was like Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. like, well, there's way less interaction here. Yeah. But but it was it was a different type of gaming. It was that, that twitchy, um, reaction-based gaming mm -hmm. that I never had with adventure games. And so, for me, it was really exciting to try something really brand new. Yeah. Uh, we'd had those games on Commodore 64, but... It wasn't the same, you know. The, no. the D pad, the D pad was designed for these kind of games, yeah. whereas a joystick, big and clunky, never, yeah. never really was. No, you didn't have you didn't have that reaction. There's definitely you know a, a console game when they're at their best, you, and when you're at your best, you don't even realize you have the control in your hands anymore. Yeah, you know, you are I know, one with the control. Yeah, it's 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 cliche, but it yeah. becomes an extension of you. You're not thinking about what buttons you're pushing. You're concentrating on being able to play the game. It's totally true. Um, and, and you really, it's it's hard to get that with, especially the old joysticks. They were just, <clears throat> yeah, yep. those are bad days. They um, were bad, and we went through tons of joysticks. Yeah. But I, I do find this interesting. So we both kind of, a little bit of Nintendo, a little bit of Nintendo here. Yep. I've never owned a Sony console or handheld or anything. Wow. And you're really not much of an Xbox uh, play. I mean, you, nope. you, you've had a couple, but it's not. No, really I, a... I am not. Like yeah. I, I, my, I bought an X, an original Xbox. I can't believe I have to say mm -hmm. original <laughs> Xbox instead of Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, I bought one only a few years ago, probably about four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I picked I picked one up. And at that point, and probably still now, you could buy an entire Xbox collection for really pretty cheap, probably yep. like four to ten dollars a game. And there are some amazing games in the Xbox library. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. then and then I bought I don't know even know why I bought an Xbox One. Mm -hmm. And nothing against the system, but yeah. I just it's it's I skipped the three sixty generation because I was I had a PlayStation three. Sure. And so I wasn't into Gears of War. I wasn't into Halo. Mm -hmm. I wasn't into a lot of uh the games that made the three sixty so amazing. So why did I buy an Xbox One? Because those weren't series I cared about, so it, it's sort of collecting dust, which hopefully will change, right? <laughs> hopefully will change because Record just showed up today, uh, and I also have still sealed Ori in the Blind Forest, two games that I really want to spend some time with. Um, Ori especially is supposed to be fantastic. Uh, but yes, I am absolutely, I don't want to call myself a Sony fanboy, mm -hmm. but Sony has very seldom steered me wrong, so yeah. I've been loyal to Sony. Uh, but not monogamous. UMDs? You didn't like UMDs? <laughs> you did. So recently I started buying PSP games again. Yeah. And there is something magical about <laughs> UMDs. They're not good. There's nothing awesome about them. But there's something magical about Sony creating the UMD, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. the Universal the Media, Media Disc, Disc. But it was universal to nothing except <laughs> so, for the PSP. Which is typical for Sony, like the Sony memory sticks. I remember those. I was uh, I, I worked at Staples at the time. Those were announced, and oh, wasn't that fun trying to explain to people? No, you can't use this card. You need to use this card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and they and they they did that with the the Vita, mm -hmm. and they're still the propriety pri, the proprietary memory sticks for the Vita are still ludicrously expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bad Sony. Bad, Bad Sony. Yeah, but they they keep doing it. So obviously it. As a strategy, it works out for them. It, it can't. It cannot have worked out for the Vita. No. <laughs> this, if they ever release another handheld again, and 
I don't think that's possible. No. Hopefully they learned their lesson. That was that was probably the biggest hurdle people had with the Vita was buying a memory stick. Yeah. It was just too much money. I do remember my, my indication that you know the, maybe the UMD wasn't long for this world was walking into a GameStop and seeing literally a barrel full of UMD movies that were like two ninety nine each. Oh yeah. Oh, it was just yeah. like, and you could just pick them up and like pour them through your hands like Scrooge McDuck, and it's just oh yeah. Yeah. That barrel's probably still sitting in the back room somewhere. And they weren't well made either. No. <laughs> no. Those those discs were like I think held together with like some yeah. crazy glue or something. And then the you know to cram all that data onto that just the compression rates were terrible. But they figured oh we can get away with it because it's a tiny little screen. But yeah, it was. Thanks Sony for introducing load times to a. <laughs> it's something we've wanted for so long. <clears throat> Yeah, I want to be able to watch my new movie, but not as soon as I put it in. I want to have to <laughs> wait a little bit for no reason. Can we do that? Yeah. Um, I mean, we could talk all day about about our gaming okay. past and uh, and our gaming futures. But or... this is about the future. This is. Huh. This is. We just, <clears throat> we just wanted to take some time out and let give you a chance to get to know us, um, because I mean, hopefully at some point we'll get to know you, uh, yeah. and we'll get to know you slowly. I'm sure through comments and through your feedback sure. for what we should be doing. Uh, with with the show, so yeah, we'll we'll just um, I'll throw this in at the last minute. We'll do some plugs. Um, if you want to follow me or interact with me online, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm twitter.com backslash Desra D E Z R A H. Uh, and also, if you're interested in finding more about more about the magic stuff I do, Desra.com is one of the things that's nice about having an unusual name. Is Desra.com. Desra.com. I want Brian.com. Yeah, <laughs> Who has that? Give it to me, you mother. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing I do that I'm very passionate about is fencing. I teach fencing here locally. Yes. It's a fantastic sport. If you, <clears throat> you know, I grew up as not very much of a sports kid. I, I hated sports in high school mm. because the only sports I could do were like football and soccer and uh, baseball, things like that. Yeah. Turns out it wasn't sports I didn't like. It was team sports I didn't like. Ah. Uh, once I discovered fencing, fencing is like, if for gamers, if you're ever going to try a sport, fencing is the way to go. Because as you know, as physical as you have to be, if you can think one step ahead of your opponent, if you can out-strategize them, you will win. It doesn't matter if they're bigger than you or stronger than you or have done it longer. If you can figure them out and be one step ahead, you can win. So um, that's all to say. Uh, you can also check out the Worcester Fencing Club at worcesterfencing.com. Uh, or .net. dot com. Hey, plug in Worcester Fencing and Google. You'll find us. Um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, I should probably also plug. Um, yeah. Besides being an amazing uh, food deliverer. Uh, oh yeah. Do um, we do we want to say the name of the nope. restaurant? No. Nope. Okay. No, I nope. like to be some sort of anonymity here. Mystery. Yeah. No, you can find us pretty easily. It's, yeah. it's not that hard. We've given you plenty of clues. We really have. Um, I think I've actually forgotten to edit the name of the restaurant out a few times <laughs> in the games cast. Uh, so you can find us all there usually. Um, besides being a uh, server extraordinaire, I am also a, uh, a musician. Mm. Uh, I, pl I play guitar and sing in a band called Max's Monsters. Uh, it's just me and a friend named uh, Melissa who plays cello. Uh, it's cello. Yeah, it's my other real passion in life. And I really enjoy it. Unfortunately, this takes up so much time. Yeah. Uh, but if uh, I was going to say, oh, this it, this will go up before yeah, before Start on the Street happens. Sweet. Uh, so Start on the Street is a local Worcester event that happens in Elm Park, and uh, and Max's Monsters will be playing there Sunday, uh, I believe five thirty, nice. uh, the eighteenth. I think that's okay. right. Uh, and if uh, and if it rains, it's supposed to be the following Sunday. So and ironically enough, this will be the first Start on the Street that I'm not performing at. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, I usually do uh, street magic. I set up a street magic table and perform there. I did so. not know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. With my well, the the the, the uh, voice on the internet's hat. That's oh, my yeah. street. That's my street magic. Pass the hat. Hat. That's awesome. Which is kind of cool. Right but on. yeah, so yeah, definitely get a chance because. Um, and can we find some of Max's monster stuff online? Right now, right now, uh, it's uh, we don't even have enough followers on YouTube or enough subscribers on YouTube to actually have. Uh, youtube.com slash with Max's Monsters. Okay. So literally you have to search for Max's Monsters and, and search through tons and tons and tons of uh, Ben 10 episodes because appara <laughs> apparently there's some correlation there. Yes. Um, but uh, but what I've found is if you search for Max's Monsters Love Out of Nothing, which is the first video I ever uploaded to that, then uh, you should see my uh, pretty face Ooh. playing a song for you. Um, so if you're in the Worcester area this weekend, go check them out live. If not, Give them some uh, Google love. Yeah, check it out. Uh, so uh, that that's kind of it for right now. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk about Batman. Batman. Yeah. I'm Batman. Um, but for this week, 
Beginning Without Parole. I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra. We'll see you next week.